Hello guys, my name is Kiki and in this video I'm going to show you how I built this 3-axis motorized open source camera slider. I already created another video about this project but there I only showed how it works. This video will be about how I built this, so a detailed, a longer build video. If you want to check the work in progress video, then you can find the link in the description below to that, to that video. Now let me show you a little montage about the camera slider and let's get to the build. So you can see everything on the table that is necessary to build this thing. The main frame is a 2040 aluminium extrusion with a V-slot, as you can see it's not straight, with a V-slot. It's 600 mm long but you can, you can make it longer for sure. Then this open build 20 mm carriage with these four wheels on it. You have to cut here three M6 threads into these holes and then all the 3D printed parts three stepper motors I use two 0 0.9 degree stepper motors and one 1 1.8 degree stepper motor with a 22 siler and as for the electronics I have a, a nice uh, OLED screen, a push button, a rotary encoder Inside is an Arduino Nano here in a little board and a big 3-tech motor extension board and three TMC2209 stepper motor drivers, these flange couplers. Alternatively, you can print one, but as yes, you can see, I broke one of these, so I prefer this steel one. Two sidler, 22 this GT2 belt, a couple of M, M5 and M6 hex bolts, T nuts or hammer nuts in M5, some M5 square nuts. These are holding way better in 3D printed parts like uh, the hexagonal nuts, and a couple of M3 hex, hex bolts and nuts and basically that's all. I will put everything you need in my github repository and while I'm building I will explain how I do and what I do anyway. So let's start putting it together. I will clean up my table 
and I will be back. So let's start with this one. Putting this onto the rail, you need to cut here three M6 threads. Then it should just nicely slide onto the rail. There are some eccentric hex nuts here, so you can set the tension. You do not want it to be too loose and not even to be too tight. As the next step, let's put the, the G2 two belts through the middle of the extrusion here. So it comes out on the other side. So, just like this. So at first let's put these up to the end. So we need to use these two holes and these holes. So I will put two of these, these slot nuts onto this rail. And one on the other side at the bottom. Then you slide it on. Align them and put in the screws. And then let's do the same on the other side. Then here there is a hole here. We need a longer M5 screw. We put in the tensiler. And then here you put a square nut, it should fit nicely, depending on your 3D printer for sure. And now it moves nice and smoothly. On the other side, the step art motor. So I will align my wires to look down because my electronic box will be here. And then we, we need to use some M3 bolts. Okay, here you have to align the, the idler on the shaft to be in line with this with this groove here. And then you have to pull through the belt via this hole, this flat hole here. And now we use a cable tie to fix it. Now let's do the same on the other side. You have to tighten it as much as possible because we only have a little bit of room to play with the tension here. I will show it later on how you can do that too. So as you can see it's a little bit loose but it's not a problem that we can do. We loosen up these four screws a little bit and we are pulling this away from the rail and then with this way we are tightening the belt. It does not need to be super tight. Just like this. And now we have a nicely tightened belt. As a next step we will put on the two legs. So I have here two versions. As you can see one of them already has a, a cavity for a square nut here because I made the legs like this. And if I put it in and you only have a hex nut here in this version, this way you have to really tighten two sides together to, to fix this inside and it's not optimal because you might break it. So I made a new version, I will reprint also the other one, that the screw is, the nut is in, in this one and this way basically I'm just tightening this to one of the sides and this way can be tightened really securely. I think what I will do later on maybe I will add some sanding paper here, a piece of sanding paper here to have some more friction. So let's put a hex nut here. And basically 
this fades fix, but you can still change the angle. So you can put it on an uneven surface and still keep the rail straight. And you just tighten the screw. On the other side I still have to put the it's not here. And as you can see, I put some of these soft sponges. These are you can buy these for furnitures to the foot of the furnitures, and this fades dampening also vibrations, and it's way more stable. So as a next step, we put on our our stepper holder for the rotation itself. As you can see, there are nice cavities for these holes here, so it will align up nicely. And here you have to use three M6 nuts to bolt this in. Okay, and now we have to put in one of the steppers here. It mounts here. Okay, I will put now this a little bit away. And these are the two holders. At first I will screw one of these flange couplers to the bottom of this. So now it's fixed. I know I could have used shorter screws but I didn't have any. And then we have to mount into this hole the little bearing. This is this bearing with the flange, it should fit nicely here. And there is an M3, or well, there is a 3mm hole in it. And now we can mount it onto this shaft. And with the help of these small grab screws here on the two sides, we can tighten it. I would recommend to align one of the grab screws with the flat side of the, the motor. And now it's nice and secure. And now we will mount the other flange bearing here into this cavity here. And the last, the last step, what I almost forget is, we have to put a hex nut here. This will hold our shaft, which will be an M3 screw, going into the bearing. Just like that. And then we put it together. At first you have to align here the this shaft, this screw to go into the middle of the bearing. And then we can put on the other motor, stepper motor. Just like this. It was pretty tight. And now we tighten these cap screws onto the stepper shaft. Okay, and as a final step, we have to put in the screws to hold the stepper. This is a little bit tricky, but there are holes here through, so carefully you have to and this, and then you can tighten them. Okay, and then we are done with the mechanics. This is the phone holder I designed. We just side them in and then use this. This is to hold bicycle lights on the, on the tube. So this works perfectly fine. You can just put your phone in it and it works perfectly. And then You just put a hex nut here 
and then with an M5 screw you can just screw it in. And then let's mount the electronics. I don't want to talk too much about this. I have created a schematic how I wired everything up. This just mounts onto the bottom of this with three M5 screws again. And basically we are done. We just plug in a power 12 volt power supply. And it works. The screen is only blinking on the under camera. It and then let me show you how it works. So this is it. Nice OLED skin. There are different operating modes. Slide means that it's only moving along this axis and then slide and rotate means it's moving along this axis and rotating around this axis. Slide, rotate and tilt then. In addition it's moving in this direction. And there is this button and if you press this then basically it's resetting the Arduino, so while you are pressing it, you can move it all around without any holding current of the of the stepper motors. So let's uh, let me show you how it works. You can just click with this rotary encoder. The distance. You can move it in positive and negative direction. Positive means this direction. Negative means this direction. In my case. Let's set 150 millimeters rotation angle. Let's rotate 80 degrees tilt angle. So this is this one. Let's set 90 degrees also here. And then the duration, how long the whole process should last. Let's set, for example, 20 seconds. And as soon as I press the button, everything should start to move. It's totally silent. And it's done. And the site will as soon as you press this button, it's basically resetting the Arduino. So you will see that if I press it, it will fall off, it will fall down, and then you can set everything. So while you are pressing the button, you can move it all around. And now let me show you that it, you can also mount basically a smaller DSLR camera. So by using a quarter inch screw, you can screw it in into your DSLR camera and you just put it here and screw it in. As I told when I press this button here, you can easily move this around. I would definitely recommend to put this underneath here the camera head. This way it's not it's not hitting basically the the frame. You can just glue it in. And now let me show you how it moves it how it moves with the camera. Let's do again the same. Slide rotate and tilt. Let's slide 300 millimeters. Rotate now we have to rotate in the other direction. So we can set minus 70 degrees for example and then tilt angle let's set 60 degrees let's move in 20 seconds and oops you need to set your currents properly on the stepper drivers i use 2 amp 
uh, stepper motors and I drive them with 1.4, 1.5 amps to be able to hold the camera this way. Otherwise it, it would just fall down. So take care of your camera. Okay guys, so that's all. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. As I told, I will put all the STL files for the 3D printable parts, the circuit diagram, all the parts you need to build one of these, and then you can build it yourself. It's totally open source. I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I hope I see you next time. Bye.